Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a Mystic Eye Games unboxing of Under Falling Skies. Now this is a game produced by Czech Games Edition and was designed by Thomas Uller. I'm probably botching the heck out of that, but that's the way it is. And uh, this is a game for one player, ages 12, to 12 and up, and it takes 20 to 40 minutes. Now you can play this with other people because it's cooperative, but it is fundamentally fundamentally a one-player game. Now I'd like to thank Czech Games Edition for providing me with a demo copy of the game to show to you. Now I didn't get any compensation for this other than getting a demo copy so I hope you enjoy it and we're gonna get into the unboxing of this right now. Now what's interesting about this demo copy is there is a campaign built into this thing and they've, they've kindly uh, blurred things out so I, I won't ruin the campaign, but I don't think I'm going to get into the campaign material with you anyway. I'm just going to talk about what's in the box and how the game plays. It's a really clever game. Kind of reminds me of, I think it's, what is it? I can't remember the name of the one with the alien sh aliens that are coming out of the sky and you're shooting up at them and everything. I'm sure you'll remember the old video game. I'll probably remember it and actually add some little video clip of it in here or something to give myself and you a reminder. But let's dive in and check out what's in this box in this unboxing video. So of course, first thing we do, lovely artwork, man. I can't, I can't remember the artist name who did this, but he did a lot of those, uh, those uh, art pieces for, um, I think, the posters at BGG, uh, Board Game Geek, that you can get for certain games. The art style is very cool. I think that's him. I'm pretty sure I'm not 100% uh, Certain, but you can see that's the demo copy. Now, what does it say here about Under Falling Skies? It says solo, which is cool because, you know, I like solo and cooperative games quite a bit. But it says aliens arrive to conquer Earth. Enemy ships fill the skies. Humanity retreats to underground bunkers across the globe, hoping to develop a weapon that will stop the invaders. Buy yourself time by shooting down enemy ships. Dig your base deeper to expand your capabilities. In this dedicated solo game, every action you take moves the enemy ship closer to the city you are trying to defend. Higher die rolls give you more powerful actions but also make the ships descend faster. Use your rerolls wisely and you might just be able to save your planet. Now this is a, a copy of the board right there, what the board looks like and that's the big mothership coming down. You can see the ships descending on the uh, your base and your city. So you, you basically play a city. There's many cities and many variations of this can make it either easier or more challenging for you. Plus you get some additions and changes to the base. It's quite a flexible game. And one of the cool things about the game from what I've seen in my uh, test plays of it is the game, while the game mechanics are not complicated, which I love, the game itself is complex. That to me is always one of the ideal games, especially in a solo or cooperative game where you can get the mechanics very quickly, but mastering the game is rather difficult. And uh, you think, God, it's so simple. You're just placing dice down, you know, and you have to place them in, in columns and you can only place one per column and et cetera. So where you put it is important. But it really creates this environment where all these ships are coming down and you want them to land on certain spaces. It's just a very clever game. I'll get into the details of that when I open up the box a little more. And here it also says, defend your base with the standard game and then on, or save the world in the campaign. And you can see that it stacks in here for you. So you have this wonderful campaign. And in this one, it's blurred out. You can't see the campaign components. Anyway, it is a dice-driven game, but the dice mitigation is huge. So while there is some randomness to it, the, your ability to mitigate that randomness is pretty tremendous. So let's uh, open up this box and see what's inside. Now again, solo games, and there's so many cool games coming out right now. I have another one I want to uh, show off uh, in a little bit that's a roll and write game that I just fell in love with. And I haven't been a huge fan of those, but uh, great solo games are hard to come by. And the ones that are really good are really good and you can't stop playing them. Now, most of solo games are cooperative games that you're just playing solo because you can. But these dedicated solo games are really fantastic. So under under uh, under Falling Skies, you get the rule book. You notice it has a tutorial right there, so you can you can bling that or pop that on your phone camera and take a look at the uh, tutorial. The setup is quite simple. The most the most difficult the thing to set up is determining what level of difficulty you want. Really, I mean it's really simple. But all these little board segments can flip flop back and forth to create a more difficult game and the cities actually have two sides that can do some different things and these boards down here actually have some two have two sides as well that you can flip-flop back and forth 
Um, and in the original one, in your first game, and that's what we're going to do here, because we will be playing this after this unboxing video, is we are going to be playing the Roswell scenario. The goal of the game is to get this research track all the way to the top. When you get the research track all the way up here, from, the, from down here, you win the game. The, you lose if the mothership that descends with all its enemies on it drops down to here and gets you. And as it descends, it also triggers certain abilities for the mothership. Meanwhile, you're building your base down here and excavating deeper and deeper. There's a little excavator that you can send along the track to continue to dig out new sections of the base for yourself and provide you with even more abilities or better versions of some of the abilities you already had. In some of the scenarios, you get to make robots, which give you some advantages as well. You can see that there's two blue dice. That's those are robot dice. And you get these city tiles, Washington, D.C., New York, and etc. There's more. Uh, anyway, these components here are not used in your first game, and that's why they, they say that. So then it really talks about the gameplay. The game book is not that long. Now, understand that there's a bit of it, and you see this blurred out because it's talking about the, the campaign. Um, there's a bit of it that goes into the campaign and the full game. And, but the, really, the, the rules are not that... It's only like eight, nine pages in total on the rules. And, of course, they're very clear and color uh, nicely printed on nice stock. Uh, and, again, very clear, very easy to follow and understand. It's great. Of course, it comes with a book of games that you may want on both computer and uh, board games. I have to I have to love Zulkin, by the way. I thought, um, I know this is a departure, but I'm going to make a comment since we're here on the page. I really thought this, this dial was a gimmick when I first saw it, and I tried it out and said, it's not a gimmick. It's very clever. really like it. Um, and let, let's just see what else they got in here. We're going to look through here because it was in the box, and that's what we do. Dungeon Pets. I mean, I love Dungeon Pets. It was, it's very complicated, though. It's hard to teach people. Same with Dungeon Lords. They should have better, uh, games of those. Last Will, this game and, and the uh, Prodigal's Club. I, mean, I cannot tell you how much me and my friends play this game. I know you see me mostly play uh, games like uh, the games that are cooperative or, or solo on my channel, and I play a lot of fantasy games and things like that. But I really do play a number of strategic games, and this one is a zinger. It's really great. I love this game. Um, um, if you haven't had a chance to play it, definitely pick it up and take a look at it. I know we're talking about Under Falling Skies, but why we're talking about Czech Edition games, I'm going to talk about some other ones. Of course, the classic Galaxy Trucker, can't go wrong there. Through the ages, uh, Whopper, love it. I love Civilization games. So much fun. Alchemist, I, I think I played that with some friends, and I did like it, but I never owned it. Anyway. And then there's some other games like I would not be inter interested in. Codenames is fun. I've played it at conventions and stuff, but I don't have a big group. that We don't play it a lot. Space Alert, classic, can't go wrong there. Adrenaline, I haven't, I haven't played that. I do have Sanctum. Sanctum's fantastic. I love that game. Uh, trap words don't have that, and of course the new, the two new ones are Under Falling Skies and The Lost Ruins of Arnak. Hey, check games. If you want to send me a copy of this to demo too, I'd be happy to do it, since it has a one to four player game. Uh, again, in the bag you get the dice. These are wooden dice, so let's take a look at those because you know normally you get the plastic dice, but they've done us one better in giving us these wooden dice to play with, which are really nice. They feel really good in your hand, and then you get the little wooden component that represents your excavator. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, it's set up in the box so you easily can pull it out and, and set it up to play, and we're going to do that. So I want to show you that because I think that's an important element of the game, the way they've set up the box for you. It's pretty clever. Uh, these are the ships that are going to attack you. Here's what those look like. They're just little plastic ships. There's there's uh, two kinds. Well, there's the orange one that's special, but there's, there's these white ones and these red ones. Now, those are the primary ones. The white ones come out when the Mothership hits certain spots. The difference is, is when you destroy one of the clear white ships, they're gone off the board for good unless they're respawned from that direction. Uh, this is your energy, your little energy block that shows you how much energy you have, or energy button. And there's a green one for your research track. And remember, research is the way that you win the game. So the boards are nice and thick. I mean, heck, look at this. I'm going to pull out these top ones here, but then this gets into the campaign right here, right after this. So this is it for the non-campaign version of the game, right? And, and here you get a couple of things. You get, I'll just open this up so you can see it. You notice, again, it's double-sided. You get a couple cities. You get Roswell. You get New York. You get Washington, D.C. Um, I don't think I'm trying to open this up without it falling apart on me. Uh, I don't think you get another one. I don't remember. Um, 
No, you don't, but there's the mothership. And what's cool about the mothership is, because it's falling apart on me, but that's good. That means it's been punched well. I like that. And I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Oh my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> anyway this is the uh, mothership as well, but I like this because when you're first starting to play, you can have this up so it can tell you what to do. Dice phase, room phase, mothership phase. Now, cool thing, one of the cool mechanics of this is you roll your dice and the enemies are going while you're rolling your dice and it's so tense. And then you get to activate all your rooms and you feel some relief from that. It's pretty, pretty cool. But like I said, we're going to uh, take out the Roswell thing. We're just going to set it up right now since we're going to play it and uh, get this out on the table. So we will have Roswell out, and I think I'm just gonna put these out right now in this order. They don't go out quite in this order, uh, but because I do think that uh, there is a one above this one, but let's see. Um, anyway, we'll just uh, get these out as they go, and then we'll put them out in the order that we want. I think it goes, we'll see. We'll, we'll, uh, does, we'll look at it, and I'll get it all organized correctly. Like I think this is a harder version. The one with the star is the harder version. This is not. Uh, and clearly that's the top of the board. So anyway, I'll punch these out. We'll get the set up and I'll show you what it looks like set up because it is ready to go in the game. So let's do that. All right. Well, so anyway, now that we've unboxed it, and I, again, there's no point in taking out all the massive amount of additional components for the, the uh, campaign right now, but I will show you that it takes up much more of the box than the basic game. There is a lot of stuff here. It comes in basically three bundles plus this campaign sheet that you keep track of and a bit of a storyline here three big bundles and you can see they're blurred out so that you can't see and ruin uh, what the experience is here outside the very first storyline which shows it looks like we're, we're going to be fighting in New York this I've never seen anything like this and something hits the you know the uh, Statue of Liberty etc and then there's some special characters uh, um, that you get to play in special uh, scenarios. So that's super cool. I cannot wait to play through the campaign on this. But again, there's not much to show there in this version of it because they don't want you to spoil it. Don't want me, rather, to spoil the campaign for you. However, here we are with a, a game set up out of the box. Again, it just took me a couple minutes to, to orient everything and get it all set up. This is our base. Just to show you how that looks right there. This is our excavator. As we place dice out to ex excavate, we'll run along this track and we'll be able to open up more of these things that allow us to do stuff like gather energy, do research, send fighter jets up after the, the aliens. And it looks like a lot of these things do the same and as you get more advanced cities, I, I imagine, because you don't have any robots in this one, for example. Um, and then this, this first row up here is simply, uh, it's like uh, anti-aircraft guns that are going to and they slow the ships down as they're coming down towards your base. Now this track here is the energy track. It tells you where you start. This is the amount of energy you have to do things. And as you can see, if I place dice in some of these areas, they require energy. This, like these, this double fighter one requires two. But it allows us to kill a bunch of stuff. Because the higher the dice value, the more valuable it is. Um, these, you know, putting a couple of dice in this section here gains you that amount of energy, minus three, for example. So now the thing about it is you can only place a one die per column. So let's say if I had opened this up and I wanted to place something down here, I can also then place something here. Another interesting mechanic is after you roll your dice, if you place one of the white dice, you place one and re-roll the rest. So you've got to be real tactical about which when you're placing these white dice because you know you're going to do a re-roll right after that. On this side of the board, you see your health track. So it starts up here. If it gets down to here, your base is kaput. It has been destroyed. So, um, and how do I know, how did I know which ones to place there? Well, you see this little A here, little B here, it shows me right there under Roswell, A and B. And if you look at the other cities, it'll show you something different. And then as you go up, some of these, you can, they can stay the same. But if you flip them over, there is a star there and some bloody symbols and everything, because that means, that, and you can see by the uh, all the stuff on here, much, much harder than this side. Uh, just to give you an idea of how, how all this works, ships are going to be descending based on the dice you put in. So for example, if I put a six in here, now this is minus one because it's the, the, the anti-aircraft gun. If I put a six in here, the ship in this column is going to drop from the top mothership down five spaces, right? So let's take a look at that. So this here's the mothership. 
and the mothership starts off at the edge of the board right there and it doesn't come down yet but for like the example I told you if I put a six in that uh, anti-aircraft gun that, that may not be a wise thing to do I'm just giving you an example this would then drop one two three four five six and the things it didn't land on that's actually not a bad terrible thing for us because it didn't land on anything that would cause us a problem such as landing on here if it lands on one of these the mothership will come down one space toward us okay and as we go these ships are going to drop out as they're destroyed they go back up on the mothership and they come out in a certain pattern uh, if a ship lands on one of these for example it will move over and if it lands on one of these damage spaces that's where you get to use your jet fighters to go up and kill them so based on the number of the die you put in there two in this case for over here you will destroy anything that's in a two anything that's in that number or lower um, so like if I put a five here that's I could put I could kill everything there everything there uh, any everything and anything but a six so that's pretty good right you can destroy a whole bunch of stuff but again as you do that the one in that column is going to descend farther and faster so if you're strategic about it you might get it to land on a damage spot and kill it anyway one of the interesting things about the mothership, as the mothership descends, it's going to trigger some things, which are pretty bad. And this is, again, where the strategy comes into play of where you want things, to, the, even the ships, to come down and fall. For example, this one's pretty straightforward. It lands here. It's going to put one of those white ships out in the mothership to come down. That's no big deal. But this one actually means that an area you've excavated has collapsed and the excavator, excavator moves back a couple of spaces. So this is an area where you might actually want to, for example, have one of the ships land on the mothership space when it's right here. Because then it would come down one more and it wouldn't trigger that because these, when it lands on this space, the mothership moves, which is your hard timer, it's a timer that's going to tell you where the game ends, aside from your, your base getting damaged. Um, but it would uh, help you avoid these negative, some of these negative effects. Very, very clever mechanic, right? Um, now, how, do your, how does your base get damaged? Well, it, it gets damaged every time a ship gets down to your city. It's, it's that simple. If one of these little ships gets down to your city, you're all game, and you start to take damage. However, if the mothership gets to this spot here, game over, the mothership got too close, you can't stop it, and it bombards your base and destroys you and takes over the world and eats all your children and kills your dogs and babies and kittens and bad aliens, right? So, but that's, that's kind of the way that this plays out. Um, and I know this was an unboxing, but it's all, I guess it came in, became an unboxing uh, kind of rules overview. Now, again, I did tell you that these two dice in the game are, are different. They're dice for robots, which will come later in the game or uh, as you play an advanced part of the game. Let me see if I have a city that shows you this. Um, yeah, so this one has C and A. So the bottom part is now the top. So, like, we have, just to show you, in this particular with New York City, this one, this board here, A would be down here, and you'd have C, yeah, C above that one. And that one shows that you have two robot spots. Now, this robot spot costs energy, but this one doesn't. You just get to put the robot there. Now, the cool thing about robots is they get to take these actions, and it, it gets, it weakens over, as it takes the actions, it gets weaker and weaker, but it doesn't block one of your spots here. It's really, really neat mechanic. I love it. So... Um, anyway, so many little clever things in a very simple but, but complex game at the same time. It's just it's great. I can't wait to do this playthrough for you guys. Uh, we'll get into that next. It is all set up and ready to go. And then in the next episode, we'll take a few turns. But you've seen the unboxing now. You've seen the setup. And that's where we're going to land for this evening. So please like, share, and subscribe. And again, I want to thank Czech Games Edition for sending me this prototype and the copy of the game for my uh, demonstration purposes. I love that. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. But again, I didn't receive any other compensation other than a copy of the game to show you. Um, and I want to make that distinction because as I give my opinions, I don't want you to think ever that they've been swayed by me being paid. If I ever did get paid, for which I never ask. Um, I know I probably should, but I never do. If I ever did get paid to do something like this, I would tell you. Uh, in this case, I did not, outside of getting the game. So thanks so much, Check Editions. Again, I just really love your support, and I appreciate it. I can't wait to, to demonstrate this to my viewers as we, we do so many solo games and so many uh, uh, cooperative games. Can't wait. Fun game. Now, you can play this cooperatively by having everybody collaborate on the dice, but it really is a solo game um, and meant to be played solo. So we'll be doing that. Thanks again. 
Please like, share, and subscribe. Please tell your friends about the channel. I do appreciate it. And I will talk to you in the next episode of this where we will be playing the game. Take care. Talk to you soon.